What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to sit down with Doki and Blur. We'll talk um, briefly about Stage 2, uh, their last couple of games and, and what they changed, and then we'll jump into some uh, EUL finals. Enjoy. What's up, everybody? I'm here with uh, with Doki and Blur, and we're going to talk about um, a short little recap of Stage 2, specifically the last three games that changed everything, and then uh, the upcoming EUL uh, final preview. Um, so I guess just jumping into it, uh, you guys had a let's let's be fair, a fairly rough stage one, and then a lot of stuff changed in stage two. Um, yeah. <laughs> just run me through, uh, run me through that because that's that's a lot to take in for for anyone following. Well, Blood had a really rough stage one. He had like zero kills, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think it was like minus thirty. It was yeah. really good for me. <laughs> no. Uh, so obviously we, we picked up Joe and Blur for stage 2 and I think it was fair to say, I think we spoke about this before, that at the beginning it wasn't going so well, I guess. We we came out with two back-to-back -back draws against Tempra and Chaos, which we just should have won, right? And then a really disappointing result against G2 with like a really bad comeback. You can argue it wasn't working. <clears throat> I mean, you uh, also didn't have a lot of time at, at that point, right? And, and I assume it's a pretty big change. I mean, yeah, but we still had like a month, month and a half before, and we boot camped. So, I mean, I, I think it just didn't work on game day. I don't, I don't know if it was a Joe having like some jitters playing Pro League for the first time, but it, it, something just wasn't working. And we, and we would have struggled to communicate and stuff. I think we came in a little bit unprepared. Like, we didn't expect to... Like, we expected to just win our first couple of games pretty easy. And, I guess. Like, to be honest, our defenses were fine. Like on game day, but then when it came to attack, uh, we just yeah, there, there was no structure. We didn't really know what to do. Yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. Just everyone a little. I don't think we were just very prepared. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So how did you change that? Well. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, so uh, going into the secret game, I think we've already spoken about this. Was when we wanted to make some changes, like right away. So we changed the way we <clears throat> we play in general. Like we were playing really, really aggressive before. Um, you know, we were trying to go for these early picks all the time and things like that, especially on defense. Um, and that was mainly like me and Joe, I guess. So we put Joe onto more, more kind of anchor role, um, mainly maestro. And although he doesn't really like the role, he he's been using his gun skill more on site, and I think that's one of the main reasons we've been actually playing a lot better and a lot more consistent. Because we he don't also, have someone dying early. He also looks a lot different from uh, the enemy team's view, right? Like, you're not expecting the Maestro yeah. to be the one, like, fighting back that hard. So it's definitely something new to get used to for everyone else. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, him not dying in the first 30 seconds jumping out of a window has its benefit as, as well, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it, it, it's not just Joe. Like, Joe wasn't... I wouldn't even say Joe was a problem at all, but he was just part of the issue because we were all struggling individually i think we weren't playing so great so joe being going on to this more support role has opened up uh like jaeger and the like malusi type of operators for me blur and saves to play and like saves before was playing the maestro role he was playing like uncomfortable operators on like Cade and things like that that he just doesn't like so like now that everything is more free to play what we actually enjoy playing as a team like I guess Joe is still suffering on the maestro, <laughs> but like uh, like the rest of us, the rest of us as a team are a lot more happy playing what we're playing right now. And I mean, I guess if you're happier playing what you like, then you're gonna play better, right? So I mean, sure, that makes sense. So this this whole change, because like if I look at your uh, your last three games, actually let's uh, let's go all the way back to uh, four games ago against Empire. You guys got slammed, and then you turn it around and you go and beat BDS, which is quite the opponent to beat. You go 7-4 versus Vitality, and then you go 7-3 versus Rogue after. So you you collect three wins in the last three days, quite convincingly. That's not just a role change, right? Like, surely there's a bit bit more to it. Are you just getting more, uh, more comfortable playing together, or has there been some strategical changes? Have you changed play style overall, or is it just... This, these like smaller operator changes and and role changes. I think it's also got to do with our attitudes. Like after losing the Empire game, we have like three more games to win. Like three more games we need to win. Um, it's getting like down to the last three. Like we really do need to win them. So I think we just like 
realise that we really do need to win these games now if we want to stay out of like out of relegation as well because we could have been in relegation pretty easily. Like people's attitudes kind of changed as well in game. We just realised that we really needed to win, so like we just went one by one. I think even going into the BDS game, even though it's BDS and we're expected to like get battered, I think we play better against them kind of teams. Yeah, but the odds are against us. Yeah, like yeah, no. I think I I know a lot of pe uh, people prefer to play as the underdog just because there's less expectation to them from the outside, and if they win, it feels like a bigger victory. But would you say like you prefer? playing the matches that that like will screw you over if you don't win are you more comfortable there or do you just do they take them serious in a different way or we're not more comfortable definitely not more comfortable because the pressure's on but i think that um like the, the the going up to that match like there's a lot more preparation going into it and a lot more focus from everybody so i think that is probably why we play better like for example like when we before the BDS game, we we changed our practice structure a little bit. Um, like you were saying, we changed it so we are scrimming a particular a particular team that we know well, and we are doing twelve rounds each map, but only attacks. Like we're only attacking. We're not defending. We don't need to practice our defenses because the defenses. You know what I mean? Like we are we are fine. Uh, so we are doing three or four maps of twelve rounds straight attacks. Uh, the day before game day every game day for the last three games and i think that really helped like really really helped because we could practice uh multiple ways of attacking one objective we could practice failing at attacking an objective and trying to find a solution for it instantly the next round you know that we, we we practiced so the bomb sites weren't locked so like you could practice attacking ceo and consulate and the enemy the defense could win it and you can still practice it again the next round so we, we really think that helped and I think, I think a that, lot of teams should start that doing That is a it. really good practice methodology that has been overlooked in Siege for a very long time is the idea of attacking the same bomb site like 10 times in a row because you get almost a month of, of work through in, in a week instead, right? Um, it's much more focused. It's insane when you actually practice to practice something like when you go into practice with a goal which I think a lot of teams don't do. Yeah, a lot of people um, play scrims for, to, uh, yeah. for winning a scrim instead of learning. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even say scrim to win it. I would just say they're scrimming to scrim. You know what I mean? Like they're just yeah, scrimming. Sure. They might be practicing a new defensive lineup, but they're not really practicing it. Because if you, if you win it once in a scrim, let's say let's say the enemy team go for a rush and you win your defense, you've not practiced the strat. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not, I didn't learn anything. That's and you don't get to do it again that whole map probably. Um, so it's kind of like it's good to practice that way. That makes sense. That's that's good to hear you found something that uh, that that works there. I mean, just to put it into perspective for everyone, I think it's uh, G two had the option between being was it tied for second or seventh yeah. place or seventh, on their yeah. last play day or last match. Yeah. That's if they insane. won or lost, that would mean uh, a ranking difference of five, either tied for second or on seventh place. Um, so so each match is. match has an insane value. So winning three in a row here, like in the, in the later part, is is pretty important. And it means that you guys get to uh, to do the UL final coming up. We right now don't really know when, and there's a lot of things up in the air with uh, the whole Rona and and everything. Um, yeah. But we do know what teams are involved so far. So it is uh, BDS uh, versus Pro and G2. And if everything goes as, as these things normally do, uh, your guys' position should be most likely going up against BDS, right? Probably, yeah, because we've come in as fourth and BDS are first seed. Yeah. So it only makes sense for one to play four, right? Yeah, so, I mean, un yeah. unless the format is, is something new, it, it, it's yeah. normally the way it goes. They might even do first, third, second, fourth. I think it will have a lower bracket because of the prize pool difference in third and four. Um, yeah, that, that makes mean, sense. The, the, it has to have a low bracket, right? Because there's only one way to determine third and fourth by having them play each other. So, I mean, having a low bracket would be cool. Not because I'm planning to lose against BDS, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd just be cool because you get to play more games in best of three, best of five format, you know what I mean? Like, it, you don't understand that we in Europe don't get to play them at all. And when you do get to play them, it's so fun. Yeah. Like, playing like the UKIN finals, Give it the BU, the UKIN finals against like arguably bat worst teams. 
<laughs> wait, wait, go back. Yeah. What were you about to say before that? <laughs> nothing. Arguably, the <laughs> no, worst things. No. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but still, you know, it's fun. You know what I mean? Like, it's really, really fun uh, to play these best of threes. And I guess yeah. that's something we have to look up, look forward to in the invitational qualifiers if we don't make it off of points as well. Best of threes. That, that's always an interesting thing. So you, you guys won against BDS, and you're most likely going to be playing against them in, in the finals uh, as, as your first game. Does the BO3, um, do, do you think that's something that's going to make you more likely to win again? Or do you think that's going to be something that makes it harder? Because you are one of the few teams this stage that that had a big impact against uh, BDS. Yeah, we're the only team to beat them. Yeah, I mean, there's been other teams that took rounds, right? And o over a best of three, things can change quite a lot, but the, the BO1 is also like, did you play well on that map? Can you do it again? Is it something you feel like you can you can replicate? I mean, I, I don't know what you think, Baron. Maybe this is a bit cocky coming from me, but I, I think best of one suit BDS more than best of threes. I can, I'm uh... probably gonna... Definitely. I think that map pool is not like they I don't think they could play all seven maps mm -hmm. like to their best ability. So us coming into a best of three, I think our map pool is actually pretty good and we haven't actually showed many maps in stage this two. Split. Yeah. We've played so, the same thing a lot. Yeah. Which and, is good. Yeah. Yeah. So I think us coming in to BDS, I think it's I think we're pretty comfortable to be honest. I think what a lot of people see is like, oh, BDS, Permaban, Villa, and Theme Park, right? Which, which they do. They just don't play these maps. Mm -hmm. And they've even spoke about it openly. And yeah, they, it doesn't mean they're bad at the maps. They can it still play means, them, obviously. Yeah, they can still play them. They can probably play them pretty well. So, like, when someone said to me, like, oh, if you play BDS in a best of three, it's such a freebie because you've got to play Villa or Theme Park. And I'm like, no, you don't. You, know, <laughs> you don't need to play those maps. Like, just because they don't play them doesn't mean you should play them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I really hate that the process. What people think, like, I, I think that's often uh, misunderstood from uh, from us as viewers when we see map bans as well. Is you don't always choose your best map, uh, and and sometimes the map that you have the best performance on isn't the one you're practicing the most. Yeah. Um. So so it, it's really difficult from an outside view to really know what maps teams are the best at, unless you have an insight on the on the scrims and their their internal statistics, right? The thing, the, the thing that we do, like, um, like we're always going to play what we enjoy. So if BDS and if BDS don't like Villa and Theme Park, but we also don't like Villa and Theme Park, we're not going to pick it. You know what I mean? Like, we're not, we just wouldn't play that. I'm not saying that's the case. Yeah, but, you, but you're not picking you know I mean? maps for the weakness of the other team. You're picking maps for the strength of your team. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think, I think that's the best way to do it. I think a lot of teams have started playing like that instead of picking... You know counter counter picks and all that because then it sometimes just goes belly up so yeah if, if you try to be a strategical mastermind it, it sometimes go uh go sideways if you didn't put enough actual you know practice in <laughs> yeah uh, but that's definitely happened a couple of times in uh <laughs> in siege history that that almost happened in our game against vitality <laughs> we didn't plan to play ghost line uh, like we, yeah. We... <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, I, I think we should we scrim the ghost line like once. <laughs> how, how did and the scrim go? In... Uh... I actually didn't get that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think maybe the twelve attack like thing we do in scrims actually kind of helped us because on coastline. Yeah. Like, I think I think we won every single attack yeah, in that did, game. Yeah. yeah. So I think actually doing that practice about doing twelve attacks in a row like it helps you on other maps as well. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think just it's concentrated training. It, it it has such a big value just in terms of time, right? You, yeah, yeah. You remove all the the waiting times and the on defense and the map swap and blah blah blah. You can get so much more stuff in. Um, out of the three teams that uh, that you could face in this uh, this upcoming final, who do you think is is going to be the hardest or the toughest opponent? Um, and is there anything you think is going to surprise people? For me, VP out of them three. Yep, same. Exactly mm. same for me. Their playstyle is so horrible. Their playstyle like, and like really all horrible. their players, like any of them, can just like pop off in at any yep. any moment, in my opinion. I th I think I think VP is the most coordinated team in the game. To be honest, they are so good when they want to be good. Like, like in like the, the game or in EU. 
I, I, I mean, I'm going to say in the game, because like okay. I, I just watch them play compared to other teams, and I just see things working like so well. Like, for, I'm going to I'm gonna uh, Villa, when we played them on Villa in Stage 1, like their cr crossfires they had set up, attacking, like so quickly, were so, so good. Like, they, they got information that I was roaming one side of the map, and they sent like three guys, and they completely locked me down, and I just couldn't do a thing. And, and it was done in like 15 seconds. And I'm like, I'm, that's so good. Like, I can't do anything. <laughs> I just kept dying because I was, like, so surprised that they were locking me down, so. I hope they have a voice comms uh, for that round. If they if they can throw you in going, help, 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 help. <laughs> that'd be great. No, 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 no. Close. Study? You want study? Have you talk? I'm injured, I'm injured, I'm injured. One is in the study door as well. Do you think VP is going to be, is, is the strongest opponent uh, in, in, the, in the finals? Oh, oh, no. For no, 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 no. I think. Yeah, yeah, for us, but I don't think they're the strongest opponent. I think okay. G two and BDS will help beat. I'll beat them any day of the week. And I also think I also think we can definitely beat them. I, I'm just saying, like, I don't like their playstyle. I don't like playing against yep. them. So. What about? Um, do you think G two is about ready to play the way that they they kind of envision? Do, do you think they're they're gelling yet? I don't know. Really, I don't know. Uh, it's a weird one. I don't know. So when did they first form that team? Like. Six like... months ago? Seven months ago? Yeah, they've played for around six months, I think. Yeah. With, they have with had like a while to I don't kind know, of sort like... out their issues. Yeah, but the temper game looked a bit rough, right? I mean, it's not yeah. it's not just the temper game, it's the, it's their whole season, I guess. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I guess, like, as a team, they're underperforming, which they, I think they know because they're tweeting about it and stuff. Like, it, it, Oh, yeah, no, I don't think it's any secret yeah. that they aren't happy with their performance. They, they are extremely open and public about that right they, they sure have like they have a lot of uh pride and and, and a lot of uh, previous achievements that they want to live up to as well so like i don't think there's any beating around the bush that they didn't perform as well as they wanted to but we've just seen time and time again when g2 goes into any kind of finals they always turn the the dial up to 11 um even if they had a mediocre season um they always perform better at the at, at lands or or even finals because uh, we don't know, right? Like, there might be a land or there might not be a land. Uh, everything's kind or of in the air uh, yeah. right now. I mean, I don't know. I hope they can turn it around. Because they have, like, the right people and the right, like, atmosphere to do it in, yeah. I guess. So I just I just hope they can turn it around because I don't like seeing, like, wasted opportunities and stuff. So, I mean, good luck to them, I guess. But I mean, I, it's, not as, it's, it's not as if they're playing terrible. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, they're they're not where they want to be. Yeah. So definitely, uh, they'll definitely play better in finals because I think that's what they they're more comfortable in, like playing finals and majors where yeah. they're in best of threes and best of fives. So I think we'll probably see a different kind of G two in the finals. I think they'll is, play a lot better. Is this going to be the the finals where you win something together with Navi, Toki? It may be. You never <laughs> <Let's> know. <go. laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, I mean, then again, uh, if if we don't win, you can just blame me. So it's whatever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a win win <laughs> for me anyway. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna end it there. Uh, that's the uh, the the short little rundown of, of, of stage two we've had, and then a, a little look into the upcoming finals. If there's anything you guys wanna wanna say before uh, we jump off, then uh, the floor is yours. I know. Just thanks for the support. I guess. Thanks for the support, even though we kind of had a rough stage at the beginning, but yeah, we really focused up and managed to bring it back towards the end, and we're gonna hopefully do the same in in the finals. Yeah, we're gonna work hard for the finals. Definitely. We're having a little break right now, but we're going to get back on it and, and get grinding, so yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. We'll spam some Doki Small in, uh, in the final show. Oh, that's an emote I should make. Good idea. <laughs> You're welcome. That's it for today. If you like this type of content, uh, subscribe, leave a like. Remember, check the merch store down in the description. And uh, we'll see you next time.